So I'm Vineet, I'm one of the co-founders of Affine and I had solution and innovation at Affine. My expertise are in the areas of AI, data science, uh, machine learning, and I you know, leverage these elements, of course, along with uh, other technology elements uh, to design uh, solutions, uh, ML-powered, AI-powered solutions for our clients. So that's where my expertise are and that's what I mainly enjoy doing. I've been doing uh, AI and data science for nearly 16 years now. Uh, coming to Affine, Affine is, uh, I would say, an uh, 11 year old company. In fact, we will turn 11 years old uh, next February, which is four or five months away. And we are one, we are one of the leading uh, peer of play AI sources company globally. And uh, we specialize in building AI powered, uh, fully integrated solutions for our clients. So AI and data science have been our strengths right from day one. Uh, but uh, data engineering as a practice, as a capability is something that we have uh, developed over the course of the last few years because we wanted to complement our AI capability with data engineering capability because it's very important to build fully integrated end-to-end -end solutions for a client and data engineering, analytics engineering allows us to do that along with AI, right? So the, that's what uh, we predominantly do. Uh, if I can highlight one unique thing about Affine is that right from day one, uh, we have been very conscious about one thing, which is building high quality innovation uh, driven solutions for our clients. So innovation, thought leadership and knowledge has been, our, has been a part of our core, uh, has been a part of our DNA for the last 10 years. And you know, we have tried to build an organization that thrives on uh, innovation. So right now uh, we have a delivery team, which is about 400 odd folks. Uh, and they are very capable. We hire them from, from best of the colleges. We, we make them go through the best of the trainings uh, on deep tech, AI, data science, and data engineering. And I would say as of right, uh, as of this moment, throughout the course of uh, Find Included, I'm, I'm very uh, happy about our capability. So when I say capability, it's both people capability and uh, uh, tech capability. AI capability and the business capability that we have built over all these years. And at the end of the day, our, you know, our people are our assets because we are a services company. But we also felt given, given uh, you know, we, uh, knowledge and uh, innovation has always been core to a fine. Uh, we also felt uh, that we also needed to invest, it, uh, invest in, a, in a few infused COEs in the last, uh, because we realized that the space AI and technology and deep tech is, is you know, evolving at a very fast pace. So we felt the need of also having a separate team, which is slightly decoupled from a delivery team, which we refer to as a COE. So we have two COEs right now in deep, deep, deep tech space. One is the AI COE and the other one is analytics engineering COE. And these teams are responsible for doing cutting edge research and development on AI and uh, engineering side of things. Uh, so they do the research and then they, they impart that those learnings to our delivery team and, to, and also to our clients to be able to develop uh, you know, better futuristic looking, forward looking solutions. So yeah, that's uh, what Affine does at the end of the day. Like I said, we are a pure place AI sources company, uh, fully focused on innovation to, to drive client success, right? And, uh, and, we, and as far as our accelerator is concerned, I think there were uh, two or three main motivations behind starting our accelerator. Number one, I think as uh, professionals, as well as, uh, as you know, being, uh, having started a fine and seeing a fine through lots of ups and downs, we have had a lot of learnings. So at a fine and as, as, in, as, an, as a professional, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to solve a very uh, important uh, problems for multiple clients, right? In retail, techno, high tech, gaming, manufacturing, and so has our team, right? And I think collectively we have been able to accumulate a lot of experience in solving all types of uh, business problems uh, throughout the course of a fine and prior to a fine also, right? So we we wanted to sh share those learnings and knowledge with the broader uh, 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 startup community. That was the first motivation. Second motivation, I would say, is more sentimental because as entrepreneurs, you know, who have been through a lots of ups and downs, we also wanted to share uh, some bit of, uh, you know, those learnings with the budding um, uh, startup community. Because, I mean, as you, you can see, the startup community in India and globally is, is thriving right now. And I think and, and a lot of them are highly capable. 
but we still felt that maybe a little bit of advice from us, given we have been there, done that, uh, and seen some part of that world would also help. So these were the two main motivations behind uh, starting our, our Deep Camp Accelerator. And you know we are very happy to see the response that we have uh, achieved for Deep Camp. I think we have had more than 50 plus applications and we are right now in the process of shortlisting uh, you know, uh, a few uh, uh, startups and ideas uh, to take them forward with us along this in, in this journey. Got it, Vinny. Now, I saw that the focus areas are manufacturing, social impact, gaming, and there's one more that I'm missing. Uh, what was the idea behind narrowing down for the, to these four set sectors? Yeah, so manufacturing, gaming, and high tech always have uh, been our core uh, domains. So, uh, in fact, one of our first clients back in 2013 was a large gaming publisher. Mm -hmm. And even to this date, you might not come across a lot of uh, AI or analytics companies which offer uh, gaming uh, analytics capabilities. I think we are one of the few analytics and AI sources company which offer uh, gaming analytics capabilities and solutions. So that was one. Uh, and I think in the last two years, we also uh, have developed a very strong capability on the manufacturing side of things. So I would also like to highlight that at a fine, apart from these two COEs, AI COE and analytics engineering COE, we also have two C, uh, two domain uh, in uh, specific COEs. One is the one is gaming COE and the other one is manufacturing COE. Simply because as a company, we are from a business standpoint, we're also focused on these two domains. So uh, yeah, so that was also the motivation behind selecting uh, startups from these two domains as far as the deep camp accelerator is concerned. Simply because we also have the strengths there. And uh, in, in the process of running DeemCap, we, we might be able to do a good job of mentoring startups from, from these domains, as well as these, we might be able to learn something from them as well. And hopefully if we find some really good startups in these two domains, there could be a, you know, a chance of exploring synergies and going to market together with them. That Because at the end of the day, we want to make uh, this partnership successful, which means making both of us successful. So that was the main idea behind uh, going after these uh, three domains. Got it. Got it. Now, what are what is the selection criteria for the startups to be set, to use the resources or the knowledge that Affine would provide? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, we have I think till now we have received fifty plus applications. We are right now in the process of shortlisting them. The very first stage was to share the profiles of the startups with uh, with, with with our teams. In fact, we want our teams uh, and our COEs, delivery team as well as our COEs, to be a part of part of, uh, uh, of of this initiative because I think they also bring a lot of experience because they solve our clients' problems on a daily basis and they have the capability and we want them to be a part of this initiative. So right now in the very first stage, we have involved our delivery teams, we have involved our AI COE, analysts, engineering COE, manufacturing COE, and the gaming COE to help us shortlist uh, the best possible ideas. So uh, I think uh, we, in, we are looking at shortlisting close to 20 odd uh, startups from this first stage and then the second stage would uh, uh, probably involve uh, you know us having very close technical and business conversations uh, with the selected top, top 20 odd startups and then based on, the, on that we want, we are looking at shortlisting top five or top six uh, uh, startups to take them forward uh, in this journey. What is an absolute no-no? Well, what are the red flags that you see that you don't want to uh, take it forward. Well, I think uh, uh, one red flag that I can, I think that's a, first of all, that's a very good question. I think we should definitely think of red flags upfront, but I think one uh, red flag that, uh, because uh, we also uh, have worked with a lot of startups in the past and we also hire, uh, you know, entrepreneurs of, uh, you know, once, uh, you know, they have left their existing startup uh, to a fine. I think one thing that we have learned from that experience is, you know, we want uh, to see people who, who are fully committed into these startups, right? Uh, because, you know, we have been a part of this journey and we believe that if you are getting into entrepreneurship, you should be fully committed to it, uh, which means, um, you know, it, you should do it, this as your only priority. So that perhaps is, uh, you know, uh, for me, a red flag would be someone who's, not fully committed to it and perhaps uh, moonlighting in uh, in their existing company also. 
So that I think that's the only red flag that that comes to me. But I think apart from that, we are very excited about the the steep camp. I think uh, what we are looking out for is both people who are highly committed, highly competent, and more importantly, people who are uh, have a really good attitude to collaborate with us and you know collaborate with their with their community at the end of the day. So yeah, very Got excited it. about that. Got it. What is your take on the deep tech appetite in India? What is the market like? Do you think there's sufficient market that the startups can break even uh, when they reach their inflection point? Or do you have to focus on international markets? And if so, then what is your guidance and what resources do you provide in your camp? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great question again, Vashnavi. Uh, I, I can you know speak from AI perspective because AI definitely is one of the most important uh, uh, aspects within the deep tech uh, uh, community, if I can say so. So I think if you look at the a- entire AI ecosystem, it's it's huge, right? It's really huge. So first of all, you have uh, you know uh, AI technology players. These are basically startups or companies which build AI products, right? Which enable AI execution. So for instance, so this may include even large companies like Google, Facebook, uh, Microsoft. Because they 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 create technology and they make tools which you know which help companies like us build solutions for a client. For instance, TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a tool that is uh, built by Google, and it, it, we use that to build and deploy deep learning models, right? So these are the companies. And if, if you, if, so another example, uh, unique example is Nvidia. Nvidia makes GPUs which enables uh, computing, deep learning computing, right? So even if you look at this sub segment, this itself is very very huge because you have large players like Nvidia, Google, uh, Microsoft, or the world. Then you have other players who are also building AI and technology products. So there are companies who specialize in making products or solutions purely on the annotation side. So annotation again is a very important aspect in deep learning, where you do labeling, uh, uh, which helps you build supervised machine learning models. So that is one more space, which is a billion dollar space, more than a billion dollar worth of industry. Then you have, uh, of course, uh, you know, different tools which let uh, no code, low code tools which let you which let you build models faster. You have MLOps companies. MLOps again is a very important and very big uh, burgeoning uh, sub segment within within this group. So this AI tools, uh, AI and technology tools uh, industry, which has a lot of sub segments, this is huge. Then you have a, a lot of business-oriented companies which either build services or products on top of it, right? So a lot of companies, um, startups will use will will use AI as a core engine to to build their products, right? Now the, these products could be in agriculture space, defense space, uh, manufacturing space, and so on and so forth, right? But then I think their main US space to solve the business problem, but using AI, right? So AI is the intelligence. And then, then there, there could be a third segment, which is, you know, people like us, we, you know, affine our, uh, our uh, you know, competitors like Fractal or Latent View, which basically, uh, which we know we, 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 who have AI as a capability and we use this capability to build enterprise, to solve enterprise problems, right? So if you look at this entire AI ecosystem, it's, it's huge. And I definitely see there's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of potential for many players to thrive in this ecosystem. And specifically coming to uh, India, I think India definitely is one of the uh, most important uh, sources for AI and deep tech, deep tech talent. In fact, uh, you know, we still struggle to hire good talent from outside of India because of multiple reasons. Uh, one could be because we don't find enough people with that capability. The second reason could be they, they are expensive, right? So India definitely has a you know um, really good potential when it comes to very highly competent AI and deep tech resources. And hence, I think uh, Indian startups can be a part of this uh, AI uh, ecosystem, which I just spoke about. What is the scope of deep tech uh, startups and accelerators like yourself? Because it's also a uh, capex for you, right? Uh, is it difficult in a developing market like India? I think it's uh, still our first experience. We, uh, to be very honest, we have not thought about uh, the capex part of it. Uh, w- what we have committed to, to right now is uh, more of mentorship and uh, hands-on uh, help 
for the startups in the area of AI, machine learning, and deep technology. So I think that's where we are, because those are our strengths and we would like to focus in that area more rather than committing to, uh, uh, because we are a small company still at the end of the day, we are not a large company, uh, right? So we, uh, I think our main strengths are definitely our, is our knowledge and um, you know, our experience that we have gathered over all these 10 years. And we want to pass on that learning to the startups because I personally believe that, you know, if their idea is good, I'm sure they can get funding from, from uh, you know, various different players. But I think it's uh, the technological consulting uh, or business consulting that uh, you know, someone like us can provide to them uh, has a different uh, you know, uh, space altogether. So, yeah. Vinit, what according to you are the gaps that exist in this um, ecosystem completely uh, of deep tech? And if corporates and startups have to partner to build that gap, uh, uh, what more solutions can come from it? Yeah, I think I mean, that's a very big question. Um, good question. I'm sorry. I think I think the number one gap that exists, right? I think a lot of people are jumping into this uh, bandwagon, uh, and you know they are taking up courses to pick up on you know skills like AI and engineering, right? But I think what matters the most at the end of the day is actual uh, experience, actual uh, project experience, actual client client experience. So I mean, if you look at are and you know a regular entrepreneur in AI or deep tech community. They are they could be very very young, which means they have not they have not had a lot of experience working on actual uh, you know client problem statements. So I think that's the big gap because you know when we were interacting with some of the startups, we found them to be some of them to be very very young. Although they were very passionate, they had a really good idea, and I think they were very competent also. But I think uh, experience definitely uh, carries a lot of weightage. And uh, yeah, so that's something that they need to probably work on to a certain extent. And again, like I said that, I think that's where also someone like us uh, can definitely mentor them because we have had the experience of working with so many clients across different kinds of problems uh, and during our history, right? So we can definitely impart that knowledge to them, but it's your experience that you have gained while working on actual life projects is what matters the most at the end of the day. So I think that's the main gap that I can foresee with, with, with uh, these kind of companies. Got it, got it. Now, uh, coming to Affiant, right? Um, what what are your future plans? What do you see uh, yourself getting deeply into in the next decade? Next? Oh, also for the coming year, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, like I said, right? We as a company thrive on innovation, knowledge, and thought leadership. I, that has been the basis of our find right from day one, and we continue to and want to we want to continue to build that capability. So right now, uh, you know, I was talking about the, these two or uh, four COAs, uh, two uh, uh, deep tech COAs and two domain COAs that we have built. It is predominantly one of the main motivations was to you know was for us to continue to build this capability and take this capability forward. So we mm -hmm. want to continue to build uh, this AI and deep tech capability because as you as you know, the, 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 this space is evolving at a very fast pace. So mm -hmm. if we don't innovate, we, if we don't con if we don't invest in such building such capabilities, I think we are going to lag behind. Right. So it I think it's very important for us to 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 you know continue to build those capabilities. Uh, and uh, if I can pick three two or three new trends or capabilities that we are immediately focusing on because I think that one year down the line, if you ask me this question, my answer will change simply because this industry, this AI and tech ecosystem is evolving very, very fast. But I think two or three trends, which I think will sustain for the next two years, which I can you know talk about right now is number one is MLOps. Uh, mm -hmm. MLOps is a very important uh, uh, trend. The trend, it's, 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 it has proven its, its, its worth, right? We, MLOps is very, very important in practicing sustainable production grade machine learning practice to build production grade uh, solutions for, for, for customers. So we are investing heavily uh, into MLOps. We are also investing heavily on data-centric AI. Now data-centric AI is, is where you, you spend, you, I would say put equal emphasis on building uh, rich data pipelines because what I have seen in the last five years is you know, data scientists perhaps give a little more importance to the jazzy mathematical uh, uh, side of AI, which is building, uh, you know, all these cool ML models. But I think that a lot of, uh, 
you know, impact also comes from uh, having a really good, uh, rich data foundation. So data centric uh, uh, AI puts equal and perhaps a little more focus on building rich, uh, high quality and rich data pipelines. So that's a capability that's again trending, but I, more than trending, it's a very important uh, capability and we are investing heavily into that. And the third capability I would like to highlight is uh, explainable AI. Because mm -hmm. honestly speaking, uh, in the you know in this day and age, there are so many AI uh, uh, architectures that any that our data scientists can use, and all of them are great. One of them will definitely solve your problem to 99% extent, right? But as a result of you know the innovations that have happened in the last five years, which is predominantly in the deep learning space, so deep learning is a very uh, very highly potent um, uh, algorithm, and it really gives the best accuracy when it comes to solving a business problem, right? But what it lacks to a certain extent is explainability, right? So you might have also heard about uh, the inherent biases that are present in AI and deep learning models. It's the, one of the reasons is because these, these models are black box models. And yeah. you don't know how these models are predicting an, an outcome, right? There are a lot of input data or features as we call them go into the, these black box models and they are pre predicting certain, some outcomes. But given the fact that these are black box models, no one knows what's going on in, inside that black box. So we are right now, uh, so uh, XAI or explainable AI is one such area which tries to, uh, you know, make sense out of the decision making um, behind uh, an outcome, right? So mm -hmm. we are also investing in these capability because number one, I think, like I said, right, we as a company believe in empowering our customers through the best possible results. And I think explaining the AI results is an equally important job. Secondly, to address the biases present in an AI model, uh, yeah. we need to we, we need to know what's happening inside an AI model so that we can correct those biases by incorporating new data or adding new features. So that's uh, that also is 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 due to XAI. So these are the three capabilities. There are so many other capabilities that we are working on, but if I have to highlight three capabilities that we are focusing on as far as the next one year of a final is concerned, it, it will be these three capabilities. Any geographical expansions that we should know about? Uh, so we are uh, present in US. US, US definitely is the most uh, important ge uh, geography for us. Uh, we are present in India, and then we are also present in Asia Pacific. Uh, but as of now, I think we want to. I know. Our, I think our hands are full with these two, these three geographies, and these three geographies have very high potential. And I think if we can do a good job in expanding within these these uh, you know, we as as management will be very very happy. As far as the next one or two years is concerned. What are you most bullish on in out of these three geographies? Is there any trend in a particular country that you think will come up, or you have a quite high or strong opinion on? I mean. Uh, I think for us, US has been the biggest market for us in general, not just for us, but I think in general, as far as the adoption of AI engineering and you know, analytics is concerned. So we will always remain bullish on AI simply because it's a much more a mature market when it comes to adoption of deep tech AI and technology, right? And now, of course, uh, you know, one thing is, of course, it's a more mature market from adoption. It's a more mature and high potential market for as far as the you know usage of analytics is concerned. And then there are a lot of innovation that is happening more so in the US, right? So there is a lot of innovation happening at Google as far as, because I'm talking from more from an AI perspective. So yeah. Google is, is definitely someone that we all respect because of the kind of work that they have done on the AI side as well as technology, uh, AI technology side. We, uh, there's Microsoft that is doing beautiful work on the cloud side, on Azure side of things, but also on the AI side of things, and is and 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 you know and media, right? So I think the, given the fact that US is a much more mature market, both from an adoption standpoint and also from a business standpoint, as well as there's so much innovation going on there, I think I'll be if I have to be bullish towards one market, it has to be US.